This is the MagSafe charger for iPhone 12. I've been pretty hard on it over my last few videos, calling out what I see as some issues. After a week of using it, is it any good? Hey, I'm Jerry, and when Apple announced the iPhone 12 a few weeks ago, they reintroduced MagSafe in the iPhone as a circular set of magnets in the back that allow for attachments of wireless chargers and new accessories. The idea is pretty simple. Magnets in the back of the iPhone align with magnets in the MagSafe charger to keep the charger connected and centered on the charging coils so you don't wake up with a dead battery. That's the biggest issue with regular Qi wireless chargers. If you do not place your iPhone on the device directly over the charging coils in the pad, then your device will not properly charge and you wake up with a dead battery. Even vibrations for notifications have been known to move a phone just enough so that it falls out of alignment and stops charging. Apple tried to solve this issue with the failed air power charging pad that never made it to market because I guess overheating. Xiaomi developed a pad that automatically detects where you place your device and moves the charging coil to alignment. That's actually pretty neat. And a number of companies have been trying to find new ways to make wireless charging better. MagSafe is a bit of a simpler design. Besides having a more secure connection and proper placement via magnets, you also get the benefits of faster wireless charging. MagSafe can give you up to 15 watts of wireless charging versus seven and a half with a standard Qi wireless charger. I said up to 20 watts, more on that in a minute. So those are really the benefits of MagSafe. That sounds pretty good, right? Faster, more secure wireless charging? Sure. Here's what I don't like. Unlike a standard wireless charging pad, I need two hands to remove the MagSafe charger. One of the benefits of wireless charging is you can just place your phone on the charging pad and when you're done or ready, you just pick it up and walk away without thinking about it. You can't do that with a MagSafe charger. The connection is easy. Just place the wireless charging puck on a surface, put your phone over it, and it snaps on and connects. It's that easy and it's kind of cool, but then you need to pick it up to disconnect it. I know, this seems like a dumb thing to complain about, but if you're spending money to wirelessly charge a device and you still have to do the same thing you would do with a cord, that just doesn't seem like a benefit to me. I have gotten comments on my channel saying that the benefit of using MagSafe will be for gamers so that you can charge your phone and play your game without the cord getting in the way. Well, the cord's a little bit short, but let's give it a shot. I plugged in the MagSafe to an outlet right next to a chair and sat down to play a game. I got really into this real racing game and I played for a long time. Then I just kind of needed to stretch because, you know, sitting for a long time makes your butt tired. So you gotta move every now and then. So you move forward just a little bit and the cord and charger get ripped right out of the wall. So yeah, I think three feet is too small. Even sitting in a chair right next to the power outlet, I was easily able to pull this out of the socket just adjusting my seating position. And if you wanna use this on a desk, you better make sure that your desk is right up against a power outlet. And if you have a deep desk like this one is, it still may not reach unless you put the charger way at the far edge of the desk. But then it's even more inconvenient because to remove your phone, you still have to reach back with two hands to disconnect it. So now you need to find a place to put this wireless charger. Maybe you put it in the kitchen, but then you have to stand up if you're gonna use it and charge at the same time. Or maybe you can find a dark, empty hallway that just happens to have a power outlet. I guess that could work. You could just stand in the hallway, but you know, power outlets are about this high. So unless you're gonna be like Dobby from Harry Potter and kind of crouching over it, you're gonna need a chair. So maybe you bring in a chair. Yeah, that looks good. Yep, I can do this. I'll just sit here and use my phone. But wait, where do I place the puck? I guess I could put it on the chair. Nah, I'm gonna need a table. Yeah, that'll work. But since I'm gonna be spending time here, I may as well get a plant, make it look nice. Yeah, yeah, that works. Now I've got a nice little charging station in a dark, empty hallway. Now, of course, that only works if you have a dark, empty hallway with a power outlet and a stool and a table and a plant. Now you may have noticed that I was using this Anchor USB-C charging adapter. And that's because this $40 puck does not come with a charger. Apple's expecting that you already have a charger of some kind or you shell out another $20 for Apple's 20 watt charger. Okay, for $60, you can almost get three of these RAV Power wireless charging pads with power adapters and spread them around your house. 
All right, so I know what you're thinking. You already have a power adapter of some kind, and $40 does not seem too bad for this wireless charging puck that gets 15 watts of charging versus the standard seven and a half watt charging that you would get with a Qi charger. Well, I'm sorry, the MagSafe charger will only give you 15 watts of actual charging if you use Apple's very specific 20 watt wireless charger. Any equivalent or even faster charging brick will drop you down to 10 watt wireless charging, just two and a half watts more than a standard Qi charger. Okay, let's say you don't care that the cord is only three foot long and you don't care that you need two hands to remove the charger from the phone. And you have no issues paying $60 for the MagSafe charger and the Apple 20 watt adapter. You tell me it's all worth it because the faster charging you get compared to a standard wireless charger. If this is the case, the MagSafe charger provides zero benefit over a USB-C to lightning cable and a 30 watt adapter, which can charge the iPhone at 20 watts or more and a lightning cable comes in the box with the iPhone, so you don't need to spend $60 for the wireless, wireless, wireless charging pad with no benefits. So, if you don't understand what I'm saying yet, I'm saying do not buy this Apple MagSafe charger. It provides zero benefit for regular charging, with maybe the exception of playing a game on the floor next to a power outlet. I'm not saying that MagSafe is a bad idea. I think the future of MagSafe is actually going to be great with new accessories and third-party charging docks, car docks, and whatever. And maybe they can do data transfer at some point and we can get some kind of iMac-like dock that you connect your phone to and that turns it into a computer. I don't know, that's crazy. I think the future of MagSafe is going to be fun and interesting, but that's not what this MagSafe charger is. But hey, if you're interested in the MagSafe charger, you're probably interested in the iPhone 12 Pro. You can get more information on my thoughts about the camera, the performance, the design of the iPhone 12 Pro in my review right over here. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.